Hello, welcome to lesson three. This lesson is Hello World, part one. In this lesson, you're going to be creating your first program ever. And I don't mean just in Tibo Basic, because again, this lesson is aimed at non-programmers. And, um, you know, like I said in earlier lessons, if you're a coder, you really don't need this lesson. This lesson is for people who are new to Tibo Basic and new to programming in general. Now, uh, one of the things I hate about computer books is that they give you this hello world, right? This is always like the, the first program you start with. And sometimes you get this whole bunch of lines, like this whole bundle of code, and they tell you, okay, just paste this and run it and see what happens. And I hate that, you know? I mean, I mean, I don't like not knowing what's going on. So I'm going to be explaining each and every line of code painstakingly. We're actually going to have like, I think, 10, 11 lines of code in our project. And uh, you're going to understand each and every one of those lines by the end of this. And if that's a bit too slow for you, you can always just download the code and uh, check it out at your own speed. Now, let's see where are we going to go. Um, this is where we're going to get eventually. And what you can see here is a browser window, in this case, Chrome. And you can see the IP address of my device uh, up here in the address bar. And it says, hello world. And that's it. That's what we're going to see at the end of the next lesson, actually. Uh, so what is this lesson for? What are we going to cover here? Well, we're going to cover how to handle your first event, which is on sys init. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, how to configure the network interface of the uh, device. Uh, what is a socket and how to configure it. What's a buffer and how to allocate buffers. That's all we're going to talk about. So let's just start now with the first line, or actually the first word, which is sub. And sub is short for a subroutine, which is a group of instructions that perform a specific task. And this particular sub is on sys init. And on sys init is actually an event. And the programming definition of an event, as we said, I believe we said that in an earlier lesson anyway, is something that happens and triggers a pre-programmed response. In this case, on sys init, or on system initialization, which basically means when the device is turned on or rebooted. Our first line in the code, which means the first thing that the code is going to do, is assign an IP address for the device. And the IP address is actually a property of the net object. So the syntax is net.ip. So, and it's always like that. It's always object.property or object.method. You're going to see that all over the place, right? And then I just specify the IP. So net.ip 192.168.0.39. You're going to have to work with whatever works in your network. Next thing we're going to configure is the netmask. This is a great example of something I'm just not going to explain, as in, what is a netmask? And if you're not sure, you can definitely Google it. So, but the syntax is the same, right? Net, it's the net object, dot netmask, that's the property, equals 255, 255, 255, 0. That's probably what you're going to need. But anyways, as I said, if you're not sure what a netmask is, definitely check it out. Next thing is the sock object. Um, unfortunately, it's not actually a real sock. That is just a bad joke. So I'm going to take this sock away. Um, it's actually a socket. And as we said, I kind of spoiled it, didn't I? Because I said before that it's, we're going to talk about the socket object. So I guess you were not surprised. So yeah. Anyways, this is the socket object. Now you might be wondering, what is a socket? And I'm not going to tell you to Google that one because that one is actually important. So let me, give you a little definition I got from techterms.com and they are very good and they give us this. When a computer program needs to connect to a local or wide area network such as the internet, it uses a software component called a socket. The socket opens the network connection for the program, allowing data to be read and written over the network. It is important to note, now get this, this is a joke, are you ready? It is important to note that these sockets are software, not hardware like a wall socket. So yes, you have a much greater chance of being shocked by a wall socket than by a networking socket. Get it? 
okay yeah i guess you get it okay fine so that's techterms.com and they're very good and now let's see how do we configure our socket we can actually have up to 16 sockets in uh this platform which is em1000 which means 16 simultaneous connections that the device can maintain at any given time with any other node or the same node uh, you know you can have more than one connection with the same node uh, on the network so when i want to configure a certain socket i need to tell the device what socket i'm talking about and in this case i'm talking about socket number zero so i'm just gonna Put this line here, sock.num as a number equals zero. And all following instructions refer to socket number zero. Next line is sock.protocol. And here we see something new. We see something green and it goes PL sock protocol TCP. Everything is pretty obvious, right? Sock is the socket and protocol TCP refers to that protocol, which is in this case TCP. Can also be UDP, uh, cannot be something else. It can be either one of these two. And if you're not sure what they are, Google is your friend. Uh, but this PL thing, that is something you're not going to find in Google. Why? Because it's a table basic thing. And that is actually a platform constant. A constant is something that does not vary. And we're going to look at another one right now, which is SOC incon mode. How does the socket treat incoming connections? You know, somebody, you have this socket and somebody says, hey, I want to talk to you. So what do you want the socket to do? Should it reply or not? So in this case, we have four platform constants. You can either say none, which means the socket is not going to allow any incoming connection. It's not going to want to talk to anybody. It's going to go for outgoing connections only. Uh, you can have specific IP and a specific port, which is very focused. And it's going to get just one host and one port talking to this socket. Specific IP, any port. And any IP, any port, which means the socket is happy to talk to just about anybody, which is what we want for our project. So you can see that in the line here, PL socket in commode, any IP, any port. Okay, so that's that. You following so far? If not, just you can always rewind. Okay, moving on now. Next line is sock recon mode. Recon is not reconnaissance. Recon is actually reconnections or reconnects in uh, Tibo basic uh, parlance. And in this case, PLSOC recon mode zero means reconnect are not accepted. Um, this probably sounds impressive, but you still need to figure out what a reconnection is. So let me just clear that. Let's say a connection is already established, right? I mean, I got my computer, there is this Tibo device and they're talking, you know, the socket is working. And then somebody else comes along and says, hey, I want to connect to this socket too. But the socket is busy, right? So what should the socket do? Should it say, okay, I'm dumping the other connection I had and I'm going to talk to you now, this new guy? Or should it say, I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of another connection right now and I can't talk to you? And that's what our socket does at this point. I mean, recon mode is zero, so reconnect are not accepted. So as soon as we get a connection to this socket and we maintain this connection, it's ours. The socket is not going to dump us midway which is good to know. And this is actually important because it lets the web browser work correctly in our case. So that's why this line is here. Next thing we're gonna do to configure the socket, this is actually the last thing we're gonna do to configure the socket. Are you excited? Okay, so this is sock.http port list. And this is a one-two punch, this line. It does two things in one line. First of all, it enables the internal web server. So the socket knows that whoever is going to be talking to it might be using a web browser and it's not just another random device on the network and or whatever or a custom device you know what i mean it's just it's ready for requests from web browsers specifically and it also specifies that it should listen to such connections on port 80. so whenever somebody tries to connect to port 80 which is the default port for http our device knows that whatever is trying to connect is probably um a web browser and the next thing we're going to talk about are buffers first of all what is a buffer again from techterms.com this is what they tell us a buffer contains data that is stored for a short amount of time the purpose of a buffer is to hold data right before it is used computer programs use buffers to store data while they are running if it were not for buffers computers would run a lot less efficiently and we would be waiting around a lot more 
or in the case of Tibo Basic, stuff would just not work. So, first of all, what you should know is that there are several different types of buffers. And each socket can have, if you allocate them, a whole bunch of buffers. And what we're going to do now is use a method to request buffer space. So buffer space is not a property. This is a method. This is something the socket does because it requests that space. It's an action. So that's why it's a method. And last thing you should know is that space is expressed in pages, right? Usually you're used to space uh, in maybe kilobytes or megabytes or whatever, gigabytes, right? But um, internal memory is managed in pages. And in Tibo Basic, one page is 256 bytes. So let's say you want to get one kilobyte of buffer space. You're going to ask for four pages. First buffer we're going to configure is the TX or transmission buffer. And this buffer is used for storing outgoing data before it is actually sent on its way. So if you don't allocate any space here, the device cannot send any data because there's nowhere to put this data before it's sent. Makes sense, right? So this is a request for one page uh, of buffer space, which is going to give us approximately 256 bytes of buffer space. So this is a request for one page on the transmit buffer. Next buffer we're going to ask for space on is the var buffer or var, but it's actually var is invariable. And this is specifically because our project makes use of the internal web server, because what this buffer does, it stores the HTTP request string. Uh, this is Google time, if you're not sure what it is. But anyways, it is vital for the web browser to work. So uh, as it says in the Tibo Basic docs, the socket is unable to process HTTP requests if its var buffer has zero capacity. Next and last buffer we're going to request space for is the Rx buffer or receive buffer. And this buffer stores data received by the socket before the data is processed. And this is important because the socket is unable to receive data if its Rx buffer has zero capacity. So we're going to allocate one memory page for this uh, socket. Or we're going to request, OK? And I'm talking about requests all the time, right? Who are we requesting these buffers from? We are requesting them from the system. And why do you have to request them? Because memory is not infinite. There is only so much memory. And right now we're requesting for very little, right? But if you have big projects, the system might run out of memory eventually. So uh, the way buffers are allocated is that you request whatever you need. And then in one shot, in one command, you make this request to the system for all of the buffers you just mentioned. And then maybe you get it. In our case, we don't have anything to worry about because we're asking for very, very little space in a very simple program. So of course, we're going to get it. And the line we're going to use is sys.buffalloc, which is sys buffer allocation. And this is the actual allocation request. OK, without this line, all of our buffer request lines don't do anything. So they're not going to work. We're not going to have any buffers in our program. So we need this line. And the very end, the last line is end sub. Because remember, this we started out with a subroutine, and all of this bunch of stuff was inside the subroutine. And end sub actually wraps it up nicely, and that's it. So I'm going to let you look at the entire code now. And just take a moment, read the code, make sure you understand each and every line, review if you need to. Here we go. Okay, that's it. So I hope each and every line is clear at this point. And we're actually done for this lesson. And in the next lesson, we're going to be creating the web page. And we're going to see how to compile and upload and run your program. And of course, we're going to access the page with the web browser and see it work. So uh, see you in uh, lesson four. Thank you.